Good morning, everyone. The intentions of, for Mass this morning, this Christmas novena of Masses, for the families, friends, and benefactors of the sisters here in Cape Town, for Pope Francis, for Ernesto Segovia, both of whom have their birthdays today. I think Pope Francis is 85 today, I think. For those recommended to our prayers, for the repose of the soul of Sister Catherine of Christ, for the souls in purgatory, and for the conversion of sinners, and for the reign of God's kingdom on earth. Rejoice, O heavens, and exult, O earth, for the Lord will come to show mercy to his poor. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, to prepare ourselves as God's family for this second half of Advent, we ask the Lord to guide us and protect us and keep us free from all harm and sin. You raise the dead to life in the spirit, Lord have mercy. The Lord have mercy. You bring pardon and peace to the sinner, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You bring light to those in darkness, Lord have mercy. The Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, creator and redeemer of the human nature, who willed that your word should take flesh in a never-virgin womb, look with favor on our prayers that your only begotten Son, having taken to himself our humanity, may be pleased to grant us a share in his divinity, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. First reading, a reading from the book of Genesis. In those days, Jacob called his sons and said, Assemble and hear, O sons of Jacob, and hearken to Israel your father. Judah, your brother, shall praise you. Your hand shall be on the neck of your enemies. Your father's sons shall bow down before you. Judah is a lion's whelp. From the prey, my son, you have gone up. He stooped down, he lurked as a lion, and as a lioness, who dares rouse him up? The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor the ruler's staff from between his feet, until he comes to whom it belongs, and to him shall be the obedience of the peoples. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In his days shall justice flourish and great peace forever. In his days shall justice flourish and great peace forever. O God, give your judgment to the king, to a king's son your justice, that he may judge your people in justice and your poor in right judgment. In his days shall justice flourish, and great peace forever. May the mountains bring forth peace for the people, and the hills justice. May he defend the poor of the people, and save the children of the needy. In his days shall justice flourish, and great peace forever. In his days shall justice flourish, and great peace till the moon is no more, 
He shall rule from sea to sea, from the river to the bounds of the earth. In his days shall justice flourish and great peace forever. May his name endure forever. His name continue like the sun. Every tribe shall be blessed in him. All nations shall call him blessed. In his days shall justice flourish and great peace forever. Alleluia. Alleluia. Come, O wisdom of the Most High, you order all things with gentle power. Come and teach us the way of prudence. Alleluia. Alleluia. <coughs> The Lord be with you. The beginning of the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. The book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, son of David, son of Abraham. Abraham was the father of Isaac, and Isaac the father of Jacob, and Jacob the father of Judah, and his brothers, and Judah, the father of Perez and Zerah by Tamar, and Perez, the father of Hezron, and Hezron, the father of Ram, and Ram, the father of Amminadab, and Amminadab, the father of Nashon, and Nashon, the father of Salmon, and Salmon, the father of Boaz by Rahab and Boaz, the father of Obed, by Ruth, and Obed, the father of Jesse, and Jesse, the father of David, the king. And David was the father of Solomon, by the wife of Uriah, and Solomon, the father of Rehoboam, and Rehoboam, the father of Abijah, and Abijah, the father of Asa, and Asa, the father of Jehoshaphat, and Jehoshaphat the father of Joram, and Joram the father of Uzziah, and Uzziah the father of Jotham, and Jotham the father of Achaz, and Achaz the father of Hezekiah, and Hezekiah the father of Manasseh, and Manasseh the father of Amos, and Amos the father of Josiah, and Josiah the father of Jeconiah and his brothers at the time of the deportation to Babylon. And after the deportation to Babylon, Jeconiah was the father of Shelathiel, and Shelathiel the father of Zerubbabel, and Zerubbabel the father of Abinadab, and Abiud the father of Eliakim, and Eliakim the father of Azor, and Azor the father of Zedok, and Zedok the father of Achim, and Achim the father of Eliud, and Eliud the father of Eliadzer, and Eliadzer the father of Mathan, and Mathan the father of Jacob, and Jacob the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom Jesus was born, who is called Christ. So all the generations from Abraham to David were 14 generations. And from David to the deportation to Babylon, 14 generations. And from the deportation to Babylon to the Christ, 14 generations. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. So Advent is divided into two parts. We have just completed the first part from the first Sunday of Advent to the 16th of December. And the focus in the liturgy of the word and in the prayer of the church is the coming of Christ in glory in anticipation of the second coming. Whereas now from the 17th to the 25th, it is a focus 
on remembering what has happened in the past, commemoration and remembrance of the coming of the Christ in history, in Bethlehem, and indeed in our own time. And this second part of Advent, where the concentration is more on what we would recognize as Christmas, um, begins with this genealogy. Now today, this is one of the great interests of people all around the world, their family tree. And with the help of the internet and Amazon and all those tricks, uh, it is possible to trace one's family tree. What is the point of the, all these exotic names that constitute the genealogy of Jesus? Well, the first obvious uh, reason for Matthew to establish the genealogy of Jesus is to show that he is fully and completely human and shares a long history going back at least to Abraham. But because it is fully human, it, it has saints and sinners. I'm afraid it's a very mixed experience, like I suppose any of our history. So there's murder in the background. I mean, David certainly committed murder. Idolatry, when Solomon lost his faith in the one God. Prostitution, from Rahab and a few others in the list. But Pope Benedict the 16th tells us in his little book on the infancy of Jesus that Matthew also had in mind the idea of establishing Jesus as Lord and King. As Lord in the sense that he fulfilled the promise made to Abraham and his posterity. And King because in the line of David, Jesus is in fact the universal King. And people have pointed out, and Pope Benedict also, that many of the women in the tree, family tree, were not Jews. In other words, they were non-Jews, they were Gentiles, and that is seen as a sign that the Messiah, the Lord, would come for everybody, not just for Jews. And so he is the Lord of all. And we are represented, therefore, in the family tree by some of those women, Tamar, Ruth, and the wife of Uriah. And the prayer of the church today, at the beginning of this more intense period for Christmas itself, is echoed in the Mass every day. May we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. We see his humanity vivid in this history that we have heard, this genealogy. We know our own personal humanity and our weakness and our need. And we are absolutely dazzled by the extraordinary revelation that God has become human in Jesus and that he is willing for us to become divine in Jesus. That is our calling. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Let us pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands. Sanctify these gifts of your Church, O Lord, and grant that through these venerable mysteries we may be nourished with the bread of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him. The Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, 
When supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. In your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Stephen, our Bishop, Sylvester, his Auxiliary, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your faith. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her 
peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ. Um. The body of Christ. Um. <coughs> the body of Christ. Um. 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 The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ.
Behold, the desired of all the nations will come, and the house of the Lord will be filled with glory. Let us pray. Nourished by these divine gifts, Almighty God, we ask you to grant our desire that, aflame with your Spirit, we may shine like bright torches before your Christ when he comes, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mass is ended. Go in peace. Amen. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in the day of battle. And snares of the devil. Buke him, we humbly pray. And to thou, o Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan, all evil spirits who wander through the world for the ruin of souls. Amen.